people, they will go in a kind of a lucid dreaming state. They are kind of conscious but yet unconscious. Like I've got clients who have insomnia. They don't wake up even when everyone else has waken up. My name is Joey. I am a sound healing therapist. The different names we go by, some people call themselves sound healer, some sound healing practitioner, sound facilitators, sound therapists. I like to call myself sound alchemist because I deal with multi-instruments. And Some people just call them gong practitioners if they only specialize in gong, or they'll call themselves a crystal bowl practitioner if they specialize only in crystal bowls. So a sound healing therapist basically uses sound instruments to help balance the energies of individuals to bring their energies um, back into the right vibrational frequencies so that their body knows how to innately heal by itself. We basically play the instruments, but it is not like a performance. We play it with the intentions that are set in to help to bring everyone back in balance. To understand sound healing, um, we need to understand that everything is energy, right? So every one of us has our own unique vibrational frequency. Even within our body, our different organs has got its own unique vibrational frequency. So when it's vibrating in optimum frequency, we are well. When it's vibrating out of frequency, like lowered frequency, we will start to feel dis-ease. Think of it like a sound instrument that is in tune, your body is well, it sounds good. And if it's out of tune, then you will sound kind of off, the instrument sounds off, the body will start to show symptoms of unwell and um, discomfort, depression, stress, anxiety, all these disorders start to come up. I kind of create different kind of sessions and I guide them with a guided meditation in the beginning. Usually it's to a nature place where they can heal and depends on what kind of journeys I create. If it's a shamanic sound journey, my guided meditation will be a lot longer and I'll be guiding them into an inner space, an inner landscape. And if it's a typical sound bath, it would just bring them into a place where they can calm down, connecting mind and body and ask them to focus on the sounds that they are hearing and the soundscape itself um, what I created, the journey, will be bringing them into different um, states of entrainment. Right now, when we are talking, we are in beta state. So our brainwaves is working in beta. For people who start the sound bath, they will go into alpha state, like a relaxed state. Like when you're in meditation or when you do yoga, that's a relaxed state. And for some people, they will go in a theta state, which is kind of a lucid dreaming state. They are kind of conscious, but yet unconscious, like semi-conscious. And that's a very interesting state to be in when you're going through a sound bath, actually. You get a lot of answers, you see a lot of guides and spiritual guides. And some people, the ones with very tired bodies and very stressful minds, they will go straight into a delta state because that's what the body needs. And they will start snoring in the 10 minutes of the session. So they go into a very deep, deep sleep and I've got a session where uh, I've got clients who have insomnia. They don't wake up even when everyone else has waken up. I would say it's science because sound is a vibrational energy and sound is physics. Some people might think that it's very spiritual or it's a little bit woo-woo, but it's actually not because sound vibrations travels through everywhere. and. If you have a bowl, a, a singing bowl of water, and if you strike the bowl, you will see the sound vibrations travelling through the water. And our body is actually made out of 80% water. So when you have a sound healing um, session, when the sound hits our blood, it vibrates the blood and it unblocks whatever energies that needs to be unblocked in there. Stagnant energy can move, the cells regenerate. They have a chance to regenerate and heal itself. But at the same time, sound healing works extremely well when there's an intention set to it. And the person who has that set intention with the bowl will get a better result than the one who didn't set any intentions in the first place. Every sound practitioner has their own unique skill set. So some might be a gong a specialty, some a crystal bowl specialty. For me, I am a certified in Himalayan singing bowls, tuning fork and multi-instruments. I like multi-instrument soundscape because um, every instrument has their own different 
resonating frequencies. And what one person needs today might not be what you need another day. When you have a journey of different sound instruments, you actually get the benefits of the different resonating frequencies of each instrument. I love the flutes and the drums a lot, so incorporating all the Native American flutes and drums actually helps to create a more interesting journey for me in terms of sound. The Himalayan singing bowls are my very first instrument that I learned. It's made out of several different types of metals. And um, I've also got the Native American flute, which is what I use mostly in my shamanic sound journeys and my chakra healing journeys. I also have got the shamanic drum, the shamanic frame drum and the frame drum and koshi chimes that brings peace and calm to people the moment they hear it quite instantly. I've got probably the first and only Kailani in Singapore. From what I know, the maker told me that it's the only one they have sent to Singapore. It's a sound sculpture. Having a multi-sound instrument journey, it's, it's, I think, I feel personally, is a more ideal situation for people who want to go into sound baths. You really, even you yourself, do not really know what you need today. Sometimes you might feel that, oh, I love this sound, the drum makes me go into a deep trance. Sometimes I hate the drum because it brings out so much emotions. You'll be surprised that in the same session, hearing the same instruments, everybody will have different experience because it's really up to individuals and it depends on what kind of energy they bring in on that very day itself. Absolutely yes, because um, you don't need to be a musician to be a sound healing therapist. These sounds are very intuitive on its own. You don't need to read musical scores. Even for the Native American flute, it is an easy instrument, easier than the recorder, I would say, to play because the scale is in a pentatonic scale, so it means basically means that no matter what notes you play, it will sound good. So for people who have absolutely zero music background, if you pick out a flute, you'll be able to produce some nice music, for sure. I think my favourite part of being a sound healing therapist is that when I ask um, the clients in attendance how they feel, everyone will give you different feedback. Some are willing and open to share their journeys of where they went through during that sound session and hearing those stories are really, really amazing. It warms my heart to, to see that my sounds could put someone to sleep who has insomnia. So they went back and for the first time, they actually sleep really well. Yeah, that's the most fulfilling part, knowing that my sounds help people to get better. Coconuts TV